This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Barack Obama's inaugural address was, to hear many of the media reviews, a stirring call for a shift to the left. According to TV reports, Obama announced an ambitious liberal agenda and a forceful new focus on progressive ideals. He talked about climate change, for one thing, that hardly seems radical, and many reports focused on what it signaled rather than substance, so it's unclear what his deliberately paced but aggressive campaign, as the New York Times put it, will actually entail. On immigration policy, Obama said this. Our journey is not complete until we find a better way to welcome the striving, hopeful immigrants who still see America as a land of opportunity until bright young students and engineers are enlisted in our workforce rather than expelled from our country. Media accounts talked about that as a sign that Obama would pursue immigration reform, which was, as PBS host Gwen Ifill put it, an issue that went unaddressed for much of his first term. But Obama did have an immigration policy, a remarkably costly and punitive one that focused heavily on deportations at a rate of about 400,000 a year. This was mentioned by just a few journalists. If the significance of Obama addressing policy was that policy affects people's lives, reporters would have served us better by clarifying how Obama's rhetoric matched up with his record. There's no doubt that U.S.-led sanctions on Iran are harming that country's economy. That is, after all, their purpose. But some U.S. government officials would prefer you not think too much about suffering as a result of the sanctions and claim that any reports of that are overblown. Lucky for them, the Washington Post will let them say this, anonymously and without any evidence. That's what happened on January 20th in a piece about efforts to make the already strict sanctions even tougher. Reporter Joby Warwick writes that some critics say the sanctions are primarily harming ordinary Iranians. To rebut this idea, he refers to administration officials and independent analysts who say it's all being blown out of proportion. This is what readers got. We're not targeting medicine or medical devices, said a senior administration official, insisting on anonymity in discussing diplomatically sensitive provisions of the law. The larger problem Iran is having is the result of mismanagement on its own part. Anonymity is supposed to be granted rarely, and for solid journalistic reasons, not to allow a government official to make an argument about its own policy that it won't make on the record. There is considerable reporting on medical and pharmaceutical shortages inside Iran. An AP accountant explained how the sanctions on the Iranian banking system have far-reaching consequences. The drop in Iran's currency means imported medicines on medical devices are much more expensive. So why is the Washington Post letting a government official hide behind anonymity to say that things that have been reported aren't happening? Finally, on January 23rd, the PBS science program NOVA took a look at drones, the ones that can fire weapons and the ones that can't. Rise of the Drones had a mostly cheery take on what it called the revolution in unmanned flight. The show wasn't without critics. There was discussion of civilian casualties abroad, perhaps not enough, and we heard from those who want to prevent domestic drone spying. But the most curious thing came at the top. As you can see, you see the usual underwriting messages, one of the Koch brothers, viewers like you, and then, wait a minute, Lockheed Martin, which provided additional funding, as in the aerospace corporation that makes, among other things, drones, some of which were talked about in the PBS program. Well, this is a clear violation of PBS's own underwriting rules, the most relevant of which ask, does an underwriter exercise editorial control? Would the public perceive the program that way? These are the rules that PBS sets for itself. As they put it, should a significant number of reasonable viewers conclude that PBS has sold its professionalism and independence to its program funders, whether or not their conclusions are justified, then the entire program service of public television will be suspect, and the goal of serving the public will be unachievable. Well, you said it. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.